Hi guys, thank you for coming on the journey with me. Thank you for staying on the journey, all you loyal journeyers. I just want to thank you. Wherever you are watching from, not sure, not sure if all my um, journeyers are from Jamaica. I am from Jamaica. Um, if you want to know more about where, uh, where this journey begins, go back to previous videos and you can know. All right, so I want to jump into it. Try not to, guys, try not to make the video so long. All right, do apologize. Um, but uh, when things we talk about, it have to talk about. All right, so come on, let us go. All right, so there was something, and, and that's all. Guys, listen, I, I tell you that. I don't want to come on here because I can. There is so much things to talk about, so much. You know, um, it's Sunday. It's Sunday, and uh, um, just... I, I can't say, okay, I'm going to make a video on, on Saturday or whatever. So it's Sunday, it's October 6th, and it's 2024, all right? And um, I was going to come on because in my mind I was saying, okay, I really want to talk about this. And so, but then, then something just shift. I mean, there is like a shifting within me and I feel like I'm supposed to talk about this that I'm going to talk about tonight. So the, if you're not living under a rock and guys, I can say so much about all of this. I do not want to dwell on the event or talk much about the video, but there, there was a video. I did not see the video of the actual event, but I have seen videos of uh, um, the the story. I've seen video of the story. So if you're in Jamaica and you don't live on the rock, you will hear about the preacher that was preaching on the bus and uh, some because i saw a video i saw a video of him preaching on the bus and somebody they tell him to shut up somebody else was saying preach the word and all of that anyway he was put off the bus in a particular year and i don't remember exactly where um and then pronounce upon some people who decide to do jungle justice for whatever reason I heard that uh, they were saying that there was a 15-year-old that uh, they found um, in a, what do you call it, well or somewhere there. So go on YouTube, it is there. But my thing is, what I want to bring out is that there was a gentleman who um, was saying, I think he was the one, he said that he had got into a lot of arguments with this preacher, you know, like he admitted that he, you know, he gave him hard time and all of that. And so he said something that really, um, I felt like talking about it tonight. He said that why does God allow his people to, you know, this, even this to happen to him, to the guy. So this guy that gives the preacher a warm time in um in the past is saying, you know, like he was saying, oh God for them make certain things I'm to him people them, but yet we they serve him. That's the kind of impression that I am getting from him. Because it's not like he was on the preacher's side. Because he must say demon rise up in him and whatever, whatever. So I am not going to touch all of that. And just, uh, it, it was really horrific what they did to the man. And and so it goes back to, because even today at church, we talk about as, as of in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of God. And the thing is, guys, 
mighty God. When the, that the thing that they did to this man, me can't believe that Jamaica reached to that level. And we need to look out. You see much warning we get? It was emphasized today that Noah warned the people for almost a hundred years. And we can say from with yeah there with knee, with granny, 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 yeah there knee, with the ear about the coming of Jesus and all of that. Hundred years you have been warned. And nobody na turn from them wicked ways and all of that. Also, um, I was listening to a preacher who spoke about, yeah, I think he was giving out a warning. He got a dream and was giving out a warning. And he was saying that Port Royal was destroyed and Port Royal was one of the wickedest place in the world. I can't believe Jamaica have a wicked place. Wicked than... And this is what it was in Genesis 6. When God looked upon the land. Guys, I talk about this in a, in a video already. When God looked upon the land. In sorry, he made mankind because of how wicked people were. That's not what I came on about. I just want to... um speak on what the gentleman said i do not have the answer for everything we live in a fallen world this is a sinful world and so i am speaking and the little that i know where christians are concerned so if you are a believer then you understand you understand the journey because the thing is Jesus never sugarcoat anything. He said that if you want to follow him, you have to take up the cross. And I'm imagining the cross. If you look, because in my mind, I'm thinking of if you live in Jamaica, you know the JPS light pole them. And now they're changing over the wood to the concrete one. Can you carry one of those? I'm imagining that, uh, you know, maybe heavier or whatever. But me just uh, imagine one of them day. Um, and then the thing is, uh, that's just one pole. What about uh, the the T part of it? So can you carry that, like literally? And different from a literal carrying the cross, other things going on. But uh, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. So I want to go through some scriptures. So for you that you're not a believer, you're not a Christian, you will not understand why uh, some things are allowed for us. You will not understand. And you will not understand that it is um, this we suffer is uh, not forever. There is a greater joy that comes so my first scripture is Matthew 5, 10 to 12. And it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you fondly for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so... They persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is saying this. And he's saying it to his disciples. And once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this goes for you. You understand? This is not it. This life is not it. So we see greater, a greater life. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, it says, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. So it's not like we 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 it, we are not uh, um it it's hidden from us. It's not like we go into this blindfolded. And the thing about it is you have a choice, it's not like him force you to follow him. We have a choice. And so we choose to follow Jesus. 
in John 15 verse 20, he said, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Romans 8 verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. God don't love we any less when we are walking through stuff. I read Isaiah 43 the other day and it says that when we go through deep waters, our flood, our fire, we are not alone. Psalm 23 said, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because what? He is with us. So it's not like, sir, are we alone in a day, sir? You understand? And the thing is, I'm not, it, we are not justifying evil and said, um, but he said that we will be persecuted. This man was preaching the word of God and the boss. Right. And the thing is, is salvation, is soul, his soul will rest in God. Just like the three Hebrew boys that said, even if God don't come, deliver them out of the fire. It's OK. We're not going to bow. And, you know, there are so many other scriptures. You can just go search for them that tells you. So it's not like we are in the dark about being persecuted and persecution can be in many ways. Some people right now in this day and age, 2024, are being persecuted in other countries. And sometimes I believe that we that are free to worship and speak about Jesus, we take it for granted. We do not appreciate it and all of that. And when you reach to a level that somebody is speaking the word on the bus, I mean, and, and then it end up being violent. It, it really gone to another level in Jamaica. It really gone to another level in Jamaica and Jamaica. Be careful, be careful, be careful. It's not like say Christianity is not a part of a culture. It is a part of our culture. If we want to put it there, so we, we Jamaica is built on Christianity. If you check it right now, you probably have more Christian in a Jamaica more than other religions. So for somebody in Jamaica to be persecuted, which, uh, um, it's kind of a, uh, let me, what should I say? Because they did not hurt him. I can't even talk about what they did to the man on this. But they did not hurt him because he was preaching the gospel. I believe they mistaken. I really don't know the story and this is why I don't want to speak much on it. But he was thrown off the bus, they say, allegedly that because he was preaching so because he was preaching he was taken off the bus and so whatever happened to him happened to him and i just want to encourage us as christians that uh, there's nowhere in the word that that to, that tell us that um it's going to be a better rose. It's not. There's nowhere, everywhere, Old Testament, New Testament, they had, they went through stuff. The Israelites went through stuff and they would be like our ancestors. And today we are going through stuff. Some of us are being persecuted um, by, you know, people talking against Christians and some people are actually being persecuted. You can't say Jesus in public. I have on this shirt um, rooted in Christ. I probably can't wear it in some countries. We can't in some countries you can't. There's no devotion. 
And I'm talking about this day and age because I had some uh, friends that came on mission and it was it was like heaven when we go into the school to do devotions because they do not get this at home. And so, Jamaica, do not take these things for granted. Do not take these things for granted. I want to encourage us that the path that we are going down, it's not a good look. There are so many warnings, so many warnings. And the word of God said, as of in the day of Noah, so shall it be when Jesus is coming back. And so nobody now take heed. Just like in the day of Noah, people were not taking heed. People cuss out Noah or in the bill ark and rain. And in this day and age, people are saying that uh, from when me years of Jesus to come and all these things, you know, let me just wrap up with this. I was just watching something and, and this is why I actually um, come on to talk about this because I was watching a story about uh, I think they were missionaries who went to India this was in the 1900s um, a mission and his a missionary and his family went to a particular place in India and uh, he you know ministering to people and all of that and and so in some cult in some countries you know tradition cultures is really big and so you know, the, the chief that sees people life transforming and all of that did not like this. And so he brought the, the missionary and his family into the square. And so he decided that, uh, you know, he, he told him to, listen, renounce Jesus Christ and, you know, let your family live. And so I'm paraphrasing it, all right? It's on YouTube and it it came from the, it was this song that they were telling, how did it birth? I decided to follow Jesus. And so it caught me. Um, I saw the story behind the song. And I like that kind of thing, you know, where certain songs come in from and the history of it and all of that. And so they were telling the story how the song came about and so this missionary and so he said he decided to follow Jesus and no turning back and so the chief killed his children and uh, you know it pained him it pained the missionary and so anyway he said listen the chief said renounce Jesus and I will spare your wife he said I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. His wife was killed. Um, the it was. You know, yeah. Things said, okay, um, kill my family. No, uh, okay. Let me just renounce Jesus. Let me just say, you know what? I'm done with this Jesus thing, and so my life can be spared. I can get another wife. I can get another children, and so. He did not. He said, the cross before me and the world behind me, no turning back. At the end of the day, he was killed. So this family was killed. But it is said that this, the the people who were witnessing this persecution was in awe of this man's feet. What is it about this Jesus why this man would allow his family to die for, you know, for it? And the thing is, guys, because if you, mighty God, I pray for our minds. If we understand that this life is temporary, that this life, we are just here for a purpose. We're just here on an assignment. We are not really from here. And the thing is, it may sound crazy to other people, but as a believer, as a Christian, somebody who is following Jesus Christ, 
I pray that we understand what what it means, the sacrifice in all of this, knowing that you you come here on an assignment to do what God said you are to do, and no matter what. I, I am speaking to myself. I speak to myself. So I'm not speaking to you alone. No turning back. We have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. The cross before us and the world behind us. No turning back. Because what? When this flesh dies, when this flesh dies, and the thing is, if you decide that you're not living for Jesus and think when you die, that is it, the word of God said, judgment there is a judgment and the thing is with a lot of people they do not believe they do not believe but why not live as though you believe then it is true and you're living as though it is not you know better you say you gamble that i mean what if all of this is true what is it that you have to lose you have nothing to lose but if you do not live accordingly and you you have a lot to lose and then there's no repentance in the grave 1904 i think the story came out 1904 and no and this and jesus jesus the talk about long before all of that so what is it about Jesus? Hmm? What is it about this Jesus? Listen, we eradicate culture. There's a time and place for everything. And, and eradicate tradition. And because tradition and culture and society and all these things, we decide to say, I'm going to do this. It has come to the end of this journey. I want you to think about, uh, do your own research. Do your own research. Look for your own scriptures and decide. Are you going to follow Jesus? Whether or not. Sometimes, some we, we follow some kind of people. I have seen an election the other day. An election the other day. And I believe there were, was there an accident? I'm going to speak that over them. But in the motorcade, yes, somebody, this lady was hanging off. Was she? Yes. And I think she lose her hand. Oh God, I don't want to tell no lie. But um, a lot of times you follow a politician, you follow a party, or you follow an artist. And you end up in some situations overseas um i think it was last year that you went to a concert and there was a stampede people died people got hurt and all of that oh that is okay oh that is okay you are loyal to that so it, it's up to you you decide if you want to follow jesus but if people decide that they want to follow Jesus and go through all what they want to go through, leave them alone. Let them be. Let them be. This is our faith. This is our faith. So let us be. You have a choice if you want to follow Jesus or not. Nobody now force nobody. And leave us be. Let us preach the word because he said that. You have a choice if you want to listen or you don't want to listen. I thank you for coming on the journey with me. Wow, good. I hope when you find this video, it finds you in the best of health, happiness, all right, and joy. And so... Whether you find it morning, evening, or night, it's night now, it's 8.44. So whenever you find this video, I want to thank you for coming on the journey. 
Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? We can say all we want to say, but at the end of the day, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And a lot of time he's speaking. Get into that quiet place. Come out of the noise and get into that quiet place. And once you encounter Jesus, no fear. You have no fear. No fear here. All right. Condolences to the pastor. What's his name? I think it's Pastor Patrick. Condolences to him and his family. You know, and let me tell you something, guys. Judgment is going to come. Judgment is going to come to those who arm. You know, there's a scripture that was on my mind because this was on my mind from when, you know, before I said, okay, I'm going to come on tonight. It's, it's like a couple of minutes ago, I decided that I'm going to speak about this. But it has been on my mind from when, when the gentleman said, oh, can God allow this to happen to his people? But there's, <laughs> it reminds me, guys, listen, God know why I do. God know why I do. So you, who is an unbeliever, it may seem like what kind of God is this or whatever. But do you know that John, John that actually paved the way for Jesus, John who preached the gospel and, and the mean like he read Jesus to the ground. John was persecuted. John not per he was in prison. John was in prison and he was wondering. Because these things can cause you to, oh my God, why me take on this? You know why? And the things that happened to you and all these things. John started to, well, are they? Is this because he sent, he sent to, he sent, you know, message to Jesus because he's in a jail because he might expect him to come out of jail and all of these things, you know? And, you know, he, Jesus said, Go tell John what's happening. Why why wanna see? Tell him, like testify of what's happening and all of that. Guys, you an unbeliever would not understand. You would not understand. I mean, look at Paul, what Paul went through. And Paul said, think it pure joy when you walk through these things these times think it pure joy because there's a reward that is greater are we in denial are we delusional are we on some false hope thing or whatever it is impossible to please god without faith and so we stand on that if we know what we know and believe what we believe, we have to stand, stand on that faith and know that this God will come through for us. And judgment is going to come to every single individual that lay on, on God's people. In his word, he is. He speak a lot of time, especially um, in the Old Testament, where he say, an enemy of Israel is my enemy. <laughs> there is so much. There is so much. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. And when Jamaicans do certain things, I'm from Jamaica. I live in Jamaica. I live in Jamaica. And can I, can I tell you something? Can I be honest with you? A lot of times, um, I see these people come out and, you know, sending warnings. And some of them don't live in Jamaica. Some of them don't live in Jamaica. I'm going to bash nobody because, uh, you know, God can send out warning. But I'm thinking, Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Sometimes, honestly, 
in spite of I have my children that are not saved, in spite of my family members are not saved. Sometimes I feel like Jonah. Sometimes I feel like Jonah. Sometimes I feel like God, listen, allow something to happen to wake up these people. But you know, like Jonah, um, go on Nineveh and all of that. And I believe that God loved Jamaica so much that God is sending people from elsewhere, people from Jamaica, people who are not from Jamaica. It, you know, if we tell, we say, listen, shake up, break up your folly grounds. Didn't I say I was going to done? Anyway, um, just want to thank you. Uh, I'm going to leave you with Revelation 2 verse 10. It said, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Father God, I just want to thank you for your word that prepares us. But Lord, the word is one thing. Our mind is another. Our faith is another. Our hope, trust, mighty God. You said we should not fear because you are with us. So Lord God, give us the grace to walk through whatever it is, whatever persecution that may come. Everything is for a purpose and sometimes we do not understand the purpose and so we get antsy, we get fidgety, we get afraid. Sometimes we even speak negatively and so Lord, I declare that those on this platform, my journeyers, that you have sent to journey with us, Lord God, open their hearts, open their eyes. Lord God, you said you do not wish for anyone to be lost. And so we declare that even one person will accept you as Jesus Christ, accept you as Lord and Savior. Bless them, Father God. Open their hearts, Father, to run after you. And for us as believers, God, I declare that we are strengthened. And oh, it's not just lip service to say, I have decided to follow you. No turning back, mighty God, no turning back. The world behind us and the cross in front of us. And so, Lord, we keep our eyes on you. The prize, the prize. Help us, Lord, as we go through for the countries that are preparing for the storm. Um, I don't remember if it's Kirk or what a storm supposed to. I don't know if it's Florida or Miami, somewhere there. We want to pray for them, Lord. We want to pray your peace. We want to declare that, uh, you know, they, everybody's covered in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, even in the in the midst of the storm, let people realize, mighty God, let people realize that your coming is near. Your coming is near. Even us as church people, let us realize, let us understand and not there get comfortable, be at a place in our comfort zone. Because we probably fear persecution. I just want to thank you for your love, God. I want to thank you for your grace, your mercy. And help us to understand that the utter the battle, the sweeter the victory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to say it's easy to say. It's easy to speak. But when it actual when you're actually in the persecution, a different kettle of fish. But we need to understand that we're not alone. And pay attention. If you're going through something right now, pay attention because God is speaking in it. 
God is speaking in it. How does he talk to you? You need to pay attention to that. How does he speak to you? Pay attention to that. Thank you for coming on the journey with me. Um, be blessed. All right. Be blessed.